Now we can look at some voltaic cells, which are spontaneous redox reactions. And your cell kind of looks like this. You have um, oxidation happening on one side, you have reduction, uh, sorry, yeah, oxidation on one side, reduction happening over here on the other one. Um, and you have these electrodes. So electrodes are just these strips of metal, so you just have like a piece of metal here. And it's immersed in a solution that has some ions as well. Um, the way we draw these, the anode is always on the left and the cathode is always on the right. So anode on the left, cathode on the right. Oxidation always happens at the anode, so this side is where you're going to find the oxidation. And reduction is going to happen at the cathode. And you can remember that as um, oxidation happens at the anode and ox, and reduction happens at the cathode, a red cat, an ox and a red cat. So remember what oxidation was, Leo, and reduction is ger. So if you remember all these things, Leo goes ger and an ox and a red cat, you're going to be just fine. Put them in alphabetical order, if that helps, A. And then the C, anode on the left, cathode on the right. The anode is negative because what's happening during oxidation? You are losing electrons, right? So in this case, you have the solid zinc and it's breaking down into zinc ions and some electrons. So you start building up electrons over here. The electrons are going to flow spontaneously from the anode to the cathode. They only go spontaneously in one direction. They're going to flow from the anode to the cathode. Cathode is positive. You're going to pick up those electrons. And so you see what happens here. You're picking up those electrons. You're adding it to some of the ions that are in solution. And you start to make this solid copper. So over time, what you're going to see is that if you were to measure, um, if you were to weigh out your electrodes, this guy over time is going to start to uh, get broken down. And this guy is going to get bigger. So this, this one's going to gain weight. That one will lose weight. You're making a solid over here. You're breaking down a solid on that side. Um, so electrons flow in one direction, and then we also have the salt bridge, and the salt bridge is there just to make sure that the, um, the charge stays balanced. So you want the charge to stay balanced, otherwise the electrons are not going to flow anymore. So if you think about what's happening here, you start building up zinc 2 plus ions, right? So you start making these zinc 2 plus ions. So in order to uh, neutralize them, some anions are going to flow into that direction. So the anions in this salt, so salt, right? Salt just is an ionic compound. It's got cations and anions. The anions flow to the anode and the cations are going to flow to the cathode because what's happening at the cathode reduction, you start losing these 2 plus ions from solution. So you, start, you have to replace the, the positive ions in the solution in order to keep the, cha the charge balanced. Uh, let's see, so electrodes are just a strip of metal in the electrochemical reaction. Um, oxidation happens at the anode, reduction happens at the cathode, you have your salt bridge. Cations go to the cathode, anions go to the anode. Um, you can represent the cell also this way. I like to think about it as two separate compartments, um, but you have your you're connected here with your, your wire. You can measure the um, the cell potential, the, the difference in the potential energy between the uh, anode and the cathode using a voltmeter. So this is an old school voltmeter. We're going to use the lab quest units. Um, is that true? Actually, we're not going to use the lab quest units. I think you can, though. We, we're just not, that's not the lab that we're doing. Um, so you have Right, salt bridge, cations go to the, an the cathode, anions go to the anode. Um, the cell potential is the, or lots of names for the cell potential, EMF, electromotive force, cell voltage. It's just the potential um, energy difference between the anode and the cathode. We're going to see this as E cell. Uh, we have this picture of a waterfall. Water flows spontaneously from high potential energy to low potential energy. Right, it only flows spontaneously in one direction, just like electrons in an electrochemical cell. They're only going to flow spontaneously from high potential energy to low potential energy. You could make a waterfall go in the reverse direction. Um, I saw it happen once on a really windy day on a, um, a small waterfall, and the wind just kind of forced it in the opposite direction. But that's like applying a force in the opposite direction. That's not spontaneous, right? That's non-spontaneous. You can do that in, in the lab too with these reactions. You can force the reaction to go in the opposite direction. That's an electro that's um, an electrolytic cell and we're going to study that at the very end. But we're going to look at first just cell potential and they only flow in one direction. You're going to measure that cell potential in volts. Volt is a joule per coulomb. So we'll look at these units again later on. Um, so instead of having to write out that diagram every single time, uh, you can you can use a shorthand version here. It's called the cell diagram. And uh, what do we have here? On the left, so you'll see it kind of look like this. This is one right here where you have 
a double line on the left of the double line. That's everything in the anode. On the right, everything's in the cathode. So again, you keep them in alphabetical order, anode, cathode, and you know what happens at the anode and the cathode, so you can figure out what these half reactions are going to look like. Um, oxidation happens at the anode, right, and reduction happens at the cathode. So you can write an oxidation, oh, I really didn't give you enough room to do this, but you can write the oxidation half reaction on the left and then the reduction half reaction on the right. So you can say, all right, so on the left I would have zinc going to zinc 2 plus and I would balance out just the way I usually balance. Since there's no hydrogens or oxygens, I can just add the electrons. So this guy is definitely losing electrons. He's undergoing oxidation. That's the anode. And then the cathode, I have reduction. I'm going to have my copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons is in my copper solid. And then I can add those up, make sure that everything, um, the number of electrons gained equal the number of electrons lost. So I have plus two, right? I'm gaining two electrons, I'm losing two electrons. And then my final overall reaction uh, looks like zinc plus copper two plus, gives me zinc two plus and a copper solid. All right, I'll put the solids in there. The other ones are aqueous. And so that's how I can take this shorthand diagram and figure out what the reaction is actually going to look like. What happens if you accidentally wrote it the wrong way? Uh, and suppose I put, you know, I put zinc 2 plus on that side because I don't know when I'm starting. What, you know, maybe it's not always necessarily in that order. Um, and then I added two electrons over here. This is what, this is a reduction half reaction, right? I'm grr, I'm gaining electrons. So all I have to do is flip that around to get the oxidation, right? I can just reverse the reaction. Uh, and I get the oxidation half reaction. So if, you, if you're not sure where to start the first time, don't worry about it, just start somewhere. You know that this guy has to have an oxidation. You know that electrons have to come out on the right-hand side. Um, and so this is definitely the one that we want. But if you accidentally started here, it's not a big deal. Just flip it around and you're fine. The other thing we should look at are inert electrodes. These are um, electrodes that you have to add when you just have like aqueous solutions here, or you have something that you can't really form a solid, uh, like you don't have a solid, you don't have a, a stable solid that you can connect an electrode to. Then you want to put in an inert electrode, and that just um, provides a surface that, that can uh, establish an electric potential. Um, they don't, they're, they're inert, they don't, they're not involved in the reaction at all, so they're not really um, part of the reaction process. So here I have platinum because I have aqueous iron solutions over here, and I have a platinum on this side because I have a gas over here and aqueous. I don't have any solids. Sometimes you might have just one inert electrode on one side, sometimes you'll have them on both. It really depends on what you have here. Um, and this, well, some other notes on this diagram. So this double line represents the salt bridge, and then the single lines, you're separating different phases of matter. So I have a solid here, I have aqueous. I have aqueous, I have a solid. Down here, I have two aqueous things, so I can put them in the same compartment. This one's aqueous, this one's gas, and this is solid. So this guy has three compartments. All right, have whatever you have. You separate the phases of matter, solid, liquid, gas, aqueous, by single lines, and then the salt bridge here, that double line, separates the anode from the cathode. So again, the anode's on the left, and the cathode's on the right. So this is where I have my reduction, this is where I have my oxidation, an ox and a red cat. Remember, oxidation is Leo, and reduction is Ger, and now we can write these reactions. So it's just asking us in this question, describe the half reactions and the overall reaction in the voltaic cell. Voltaic just means this is a spontaneous reaction. We're not dealing with electrolytic cells yet. So as long as you remember the anode's on the left and that oxidation happens at the anode and oxidation is losing electrons, then you can write this half reaction. And so um, oxidation means the oxidation number is going to be increasing. So I can just look at these two ions. I know this is Fe2+, plus, this is Fe3+. Plus. I know I'm going to go from Fe2+, plus to Fe3+, plus because the oxidation number is increasing. And then I can balance the charge. I have a plus 2 charge over here, plus 3 over there, so I need one electron. And I'm definitely losing electrons. Electrons are coming out on the right side. Um, for the chlorine, maybe you don't really know where to start with the chlorine, so you just started over here and you said, all right, I have Cl minus going to Cl2, and then I want to balance, so I get two Cl minus, and I get to Cl2. I have a minus two charge here, so I want to add two electrons, and um, and then you stop there and you say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm losing electrons again. That's 
an oxidation half reaction. I know I'm on the cathode. I need to have a reduction half reaction. So flip it around. All you have to do is flip it around, which means I take my Cl2 and two electrons, and that gives me two Cl minus. So I just flip it around. Now I know this is my Leo, my oxidation half reaction, and this is my Ger, my reduction half reaction, because cats are red, and I have an ox over there. Um, it's too messy. <laughs> this is your Leo. This is the oxidation. Okay, that's the anode. I know the anode because this is on the left. This is my cathode. So if this happens, it's okay. I did that on purpose to show you that this is what's gonna happen if you just write them in the order. Sometimes you're right, sometimes you're not. You know that the, you don't wanna have two oxidation reactions. Every oxidation reaction needs a uh, reduction reaction to go with it. Somebody's gaining electrons, somebody else has to lose electrons. Now before I add these up, what do I have to do? I have to make sure that the number of electrons gained equals the number of electrons lost. I'm losing two, I'm gaining, I'm sorry, I'm losing one, I'm gaining two. So I want to multiply everybody here by two so that I end up with two Fe2 plus. And then I can cancel those. So my overall reaction looks like that. Two Fe2 plus Cl2, two Fe3 plus, and two Cl minus. So that might be the first step of a problem, and then after that we will find the difference in potential energy. Um, so these are our half reactions here. In here, this is the oxidation half reaction on the anode. This is the reduction half reaction on the cathode. This is your overall reaction when you add them all up. Make sure that you have one that's gaining electrons, one that's losing electrons, and then you balance it to make sure the number of electrons gained equals the number of electrons lost.